Hey, it's Rob Jigla. We've done a few trips through the Republic of Zimbabwe. We've learned a few things and I'd like to share them with you. So the intent, of course, is to help you with your planning, but also maybe to make your journey a bit easier and a bit more fun and a bit less stressful <laughs> in some instances. Let's get into it in no specific order. Cash. Cash is king in Zim. Difficult to use cards. You can use cards in some places, but it's, it's sometimes a bit difficult. Cash is definitely the preferable way to go and US dollars in particular, you can use US dollars anywhere in the country. You can use rands as well in a lot of the country. The closer you are to South Africa, the easier it is to use rands, but generally US dollars is the preferred currency. Something important to note with cash, of course, the country's currency is not US dollars or rands. And so it's difficult to find change a lot of the time. So definitely have small denominations of the currency that you're going to use. So for example, toll fees are $2. And if you don't have $2, then it's difficult to get change at the toll gate because most Zimbabweans are using cards and local currency. Whereas if you have an international car or a car from outside of the country rather, then you must pay in dollars or rands. So have small denominations with you. It'll make your life a lot easier and save you a bit of money and time. Generally, it's the case that you will not get change. You can end up losing a bit of money along the way. So have small denominations, have change, a lot easier. Good change, eh? No change. So note that there are some things that you must pay cash for. So you must pay cash for your toll fees. You must pay cash for fuel. You must pay cash when you cross the border and you've got to pay all the various duties that you need to give to the revenue authorities at the border. So there are some things that you have to have cash for and it's got to be in US dollars and rands work as well a lot of the time. Roadblocks, mm -hmm. lots of roadblocks mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. It is a part of overlanding in Zimbabwe. There are roadblocks. Every significant town entrance and exit from that town. Many little towns along the way on the major roads. You're going to come across roadblocks. It's going to happen. So be prepared for it. Be patient. We haven't had any issues with the roadblocks except one instance near Chirundu, which was unpleasant. But other than that, it's generally pretty simple. You pitch up to the roadblock. You've got all the stuff on your car that you're supposed to have, like your reflective stickers and so on, and they will wave you through. You must have your TIP as well. Of course, if you're driving a car from out of Zimbabwe, so you've got all your stuff together, you will generally quite easily get through those roadblocks but they are there and you've got to stop for them and it feels a little bit kind of time wasting as well, but it's part of driving through Zimbabwe. Safety. So Zimbabwe is generally quite safe. We didn't have any incidents of significance and we certainly didn't feel unsafe at any time. And people are quite helpful as well. So if you do, for example, have a puncture or something or an issue and you've got to stop on the side of the road, for example, it's generally pretty safe. It's generally safe walking around in the towns and wherever you're walking around in the country. No issues at all, especially in the rural areas. No concerns with safety. We didn't have any concerns with safety and it's generally safe to walk around. And speaking of safety, we also want people to be very friendly, generally speaking and also willing to assist where we needed assistance. A very important tip that I would like to give for driving in Zimbabwe, and I think in Africa in general, especially in the rural areas, is don't drive at night. You will come across livestock. A lot of the time, the roads are unfenced, all the properties, the farms, the villages on the side of the road are unfenced. So you will come across livestock, and it's particularly dangerous at night. Donkeys, for example, that are difficult to see at night. Cows that are, or cattle rather, that are dark colors, difficult to see at night. So I would recommend that wherever you can drive in the daytime, drive in daylight, avoid driving after dark. And this applies to the significant tarred arterial roads as well. As soon as you get out of the towns, you will find livestock from time to time because there are villages on the sides of the roads. Fuel in Zimbabwe, very important. There was a time it was very difficult to get fuel in the country. Lately, it's not the case. Fuel is very available. However, once you get out of the significant towns, there's almost no fuel. So if you're driving South Africa, for example, you will often come across 
garages or fuel stations rather on the side of the highway at various intervals you won't find that in most cases in Zimbabwe and in a lot of southern Africa as well so make sure you fuel up when you're in those significant towns and when you go off the main arterial roads away from significant towns you must have adequate fuel so driving for example from the Bulawayo Victoria Falls Road to Binga absolutely no fuel except in Binga and even in Binga we had trouble getting fuel because there was a couple of electricity cuts and so we couldn't get fuel so basically then we had to get fuel from the national parks that we stayed in which is getting better because they they now have fuel available at those but still it's limited quantities as well so fuel is important if you are going to drive off the major arterial roads and you're not going to be in significant towns then make sure that you fill up Food. Food is generally quite available in most of the significant towns. You'll generally find big brand stores like you find in South Africa. So pick and pay and OKs and spa and that sort of thing. And so you will have access to fresh vegetables and you'll have access to meat, for example. And stuff that you generally need like canned food if you want canned food and bread and milk and stuff that you will generally use on a day to day basis. Now, once you get out of the significant towns, it does get a bit more difficult because you won't find those types of shops and you'll find less and less refrigeration as well. So less and less refrigerated meat, for example, and also less and less access to fresh vegetables, largely because they're off the main supply routes. So I definitely recommend that you buy all of your food and meat in the more significant towns, the larger towns. Once you get out of there, it's gonna be difficult to find meat in refrigerated butcheries and that sort of thing. Definitely carry extra water with you, not just because it's hot and tropical in most of the country, but also because once you get out of the cities and towns, it becomes more and more difficult to find potable water. Now, one of the things with potable water is you will find generally water in towns and so on. But I find that I'm quite sensitive to water quality. And so I'm easily affected by water that's not of the same quality as what I'm used to here in Johannesburg. If you go to the national parks that note they generally do not have stores what you will almost always find there is wood and wood <laughs> but you will not for example find water on sale you won't find drinks you won't find food and all that sort of stuff so you've got to go there prepared vehicle requirements very important for planning your trip to get across the border and to make sure that you have all the things on your car and in your car that you are lawfully required to have. I'll put a couple of links below to some online resources where you can easily access those lists but let me rattle off a few important ones. You must have reflective stickers on your car, white reflective stickers on the front bumper and red reflective stickers on the rear bumper. You've got to have a sticker on your car indicating what country you're from. So from South Africa we've got a white sticker with a ZA written in black. If you are from another country you would have a white sticker with whatever the relevant letters are on your front and rear bumper ideally you must have two reflective triangles in case you have a breakdown or you need to stop on the side of the road for example one for traffic coming from the front and one for traffic approaching from behind you need to have reflective jackets so if you break down on the side of the road again you must put on your reflective jackets and those must be visible reflective jackets so typically green or orange neon green or neon orange with reflective strips on them you must have a fire extinguisher which is rated at a kilogram or more although there seems to be some flexibility on that it seems to be like more than 750 grams is acceptable but the regulatory requirement is a kilogram and if they check at the roadblocks, they will check the date on your fire extinguisher. So we generally carry two fire extinguishers because it's sensible. One that stays in the front of the car and one that's easily accessible from the back of the car. You've got to have a spare wheel, of course, but in Zim, it's also a legal requirement. You must have a jack and tools for changing a wheel. Make sure all your lights work. Of course, you know, it's general roadworthy requirements. So your headlights and your indicators and your hazards and your brake lights and all the things that you generally expect to have on a car that is roadworthy and check that your license plate light is working so basically roadworthy stuff your vehicle needs to be roadworthy the handbrake needs to work for example stuff like that patience very important patience and a sense of humor i think there are a lot of circumstances where there isn't a 
sense of urgency, let's call it that. So sometimes police roadblocks, for example, where they slow you down and then stop you and then do nothing for a few seconds, which feels like an eternity and then wave you through. So just be patient and keep your sense of humor. That patience and sense of humor is also really important when you're crossing the borders, can get frustrating. So yeah, be patient, have a sense of humor. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you have a sense of impatience and sense of urgency, then things can go even slower. Greet. It's important to greet. And I think it's important in the whole of Africa in general, the places I've been to. So greet, say hi, how are you? Have those like basic human interactions. It's important and it's important to people in this part of the world in particular. So greet, ask, how are you doing? Respond and create that rapport. It's, it's a part of our culture in this part of the world. Starting now. <laughs> good afternoon, officer. Good, good. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Hello. How are you? Good. Not too bad. Thanks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Road conditions vary in Zimbabwe. The major arterial roads, some of them are really good and they've been revamped, refurbished. They're nice, wide, smooth tar roads with emergency shoulders along them. It's not generally the case. Most roads are, all the roads are generally single lane uh, in each, each direction. And generally it's narrow. There isn't a shoulder on the road a lot of the time. On the roads that haven't been refurbished, you'll often come across pothole sections, sections where the road is pretty bad and you will have to slow down and drive carefully over those sections. The dirt roads that we have traveled on are generally pretty good. They were generally not terribly corrugated, although of course it depends on what time of year you were driving on those roads as well, but they were generally quite traversable. Sometimes a little bit slow, sometimes a bit corrugated and rutted, but they were generally pretty good. Of course, you've got to have the right car to travel on those roads. Stuff generally takes longer to happen. So add buffer time into your planning. It takes longer to get across the border than you expect. It takes longer to traverse the roads than you expect because there are potholed sections in many cases. You've got to go through roadblocks. Some of those can be a little bit slow. The toll gates can be slow as well. You can have relatively long queues at the toll gates because they generally only have one or two booths at the toll gates. So things generally take a bit longer and sometimes there isn't a sense of urgency as well. So I hope you found that informative, I hope that's helpful, I hope that helps you with planning your trip and making your trip a bit more fun, less frustrating in circumstances where it can be frustrating. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, please do, it's good to get that feedback from you guys, it shows that you like the information that we're giving to you. Also leave a comment below, if you've got a question, leave a question below as well. Check the links for resources on the stuff you need to have on your vehicle. If you haven't subscribed, then do subscribe, it is free and Hit the bell to get notifications when I put a new video up. And until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything, have a great time.